What's up, everybody? Listen, this is awesome. This is our first time coming to you live with our Bible studies, trying to get creative. We've officially titled this uh, The Living Room from Our Hearts to Your Home. I'm joined here by Pastor Reverend uh, Stephen Day. Hello, hello. Really strong man of God, good friend of mine, real cool dude. Uh, and so what we get to do here is uh, we just get to, to open up God's word with you and, and really just come and, and just encourage you in the faith and also encourage each other. And so yeah. this is meant to be completely organic and just in terms of the scriptures and, and us pressing into it. Um, we want to hit right what's going on. And so it's pretty cool with you watching. You're also going to get the opportunity to type in your questions, any questions you have that are related to the topic that we're covering here Tonight, you can send in those questions live, and we will try to answer those real time for you. So I encourage you to do that, and I'll, I'll mention that a few times throughout for those that are going to be joining in with us um, just as we go along. And so, so it's going to be a, a really good, good time. Um, I'm going to pray for us, and then I'll, uh, I'll let you guys know where we're headed for tonight. So, so pray with me. Uh, Father God, we thank you for this moment, Jesus. Thank you for technology and just for us to be able to get creative with how we reach out to your people and encourage your people, Father. God, I pray that there are folks that are watching tonight that don't even know you, God. I pray that there are people who um, will hear the gospel, will hear the, the realness of it, and um, Lord, just everything that comes with living this life uh, for you and for your sake, God. So just have your way right here in these moments, Lord. Just be honored, God, allow it to be real and raw, and um, God, may we just engage in and what you have for us here tonight. So we love you, in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, so a couple of things. Uh, so in light of what's going on in our world today, just with the coronavirus, I thought it'd be, be fitting to, uh, to give a little added humor. So, so what I, I did, Pastor Stephen, was I looked up um, just some funny things that I've seen online that people have been posting about the coronavirus. So there was a friend of mine on Facebook they posted, God's got this. And then somebody else responded, then he too should be quarantined. Uh, that was hilarious to me. Um, somebody else said, I didn't plan on giving up this much for Lent. Uh, that was clever. That was funny. And then, of course, we got all the parents that are doing the homeschool stuff with their kids right now, just mm -hmm. pulling their hair out. And, and somebody who's doing that with their kids, they wrote, uh, and just like that, spankings are back in school. So... Uh, Pretty clever, pretty funny. Um, so, yeah, definitely keeping it lighthearted there. Um, so what we're going to do tonight is, Stephen and myself, we're going to look at a topic titled, Where is God? Uh, where is God? And we're going to look at Job 23 and really just kind of break it down. I'm going to kind of go slowly through it and just break it apart. But but I just, I look at, at Job and I just think it's a fitting text for us right now. And, and a lot of people are dealing with a lot of stuff. I mean, I've had conversations with folks that they're genuinely concerned and just dealing with some fear and just struggle of, of, of worrying about their health, worrying about their income. Um, small business owners that I know are just are just like, we don't know what's going to happen right now. And so, you know, I don't know if you've had those conversations as yeah, well. Yeah, I actually had one today with a, with a gentleman who um, owns a business in New York. He, he works here, but also owns a business in, in New York and has been in business for 20 years. And um, they're, yeah, in a tough spot right now. Yeah, yeah. And I, uh, I had a chance to pray with, uh, it was several people that worked with my wife and they called and were like, we're just, we're struggling right now. We need, we need you to pray for us. And so that's the reality of, of where we are. And, and to be honest, there's even things that I've dealt with and struggled with. Of, you know, what does it look like for us as pastors when the church isn't coming together? You know, what does that look like in terms of keeping these lights on and, and keeping bills paid and, and things like that? Are the people going to continue to give and be generous when they're concerned about their own incomes? And so there's legitimate stuff, man, yeah. that, that we're, we're processing and dealing with. Like, yes, we're in, in ministry, we're pastors, but we're still human. And, and there's still just, there's that thread of fear that's yeah. always knocking there is, of our heart. There is, I, and I think for me, um, one of the things that I've found is, you know, with this kind of self-quarantine thing, and usually I'm 
spending most of my, my time in a local school or something like that, but now that I'm not doing that, I, I have to be very conscious about what I'm doing in terms of I can either sit and contemplate the what ifs, um, or I can choose to, you know, to, to focus on, on truth and to also spend time, you know, uh, messing with the kids and wrestling around and just having some quality family time there as well. Absolutely. I had a, um, my daughter had to record one of her dances in the dance class, had to record one of her dances, so made sure that I was involved in that. Nice. Some of that. I want to see that, by the way. Yeah. We've got to send you that recording. Awesome, man. Well, good. Good stuff. Um, so, yeah. So, we're just going to press on this together, and um, we'll just, we'll take our time with it, and uh, I see what the word of the Lord has to uh, to say to us. So, I'll just kind of read a little bit, and I'll stop, or you stop me wherever you want. Um, but again, we're reading Job 23, uh, and our title for tonight is, Where is God? So, go ahead and prep up your questions. Go ahead and, and get ready to type those in as we go along, and um as always, if there's something that resonates with your soul, type amen. Put an amen on that screen, and, and uh, we'll go back and, and look at those and just thank God for him speaking to, to you. So, Job 23, it says, Then Job answered and said, Today also my complaint is bitter. My hand is heavy on account of my groaning. Um, so just a little context here. Uh, you've got Job, obviously, in the heat. Of just suffering, just just dealing with a, a lot of questions, a lot of confusion, um, things that have been happening in his life that have just been completely unexplainable. Um, and then Job has got his guys around him, uh, and, and his, his boys around him have been very encouraging. Uh, matter of fact, with the chapter before, uh, you, you got his you got his friend here, uh, Eliphaz, and, and he's basically saying, Job, you. Man, you got too much sin in your life. That's what he's saying. I mean, literally in chapter 2, verse 5, he says, there is no end to your iniquities. I mean, how encouraging is that, right? Um, and so I, I look at that, and I just, man, I just think about like this, just with the virus and everything. Like, I've, I've literally heard some pastors out there say that, like, folks who, some people who have gotten coronavirus, like, it's a result of their sin. And I'm just like, you're an idiot. Like, yeah. for real. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, the, the virus is a result of a fallen world. Right. Like, when we go back to Genesis and we see the broken nature of our world and just in humanity, it's an extension of that. Absolutely. Um, but but it's, it's not a result of someone being in deep sin, so they, they caught it, you know. And I just, I think about... That just in general, when we see people suffering, uh, I think about John nine, right? The cat that was that was blind. They're like, "Oh man, you know what? What sin did you commit?" And then the text tells us that no, this was not done as a result of the sin. It was done so that the glory of God could be right. seen. For sure, you know. And so, like, I, I think about just what's going on, man. Like every bit of this is meant to to exalt the glory of God. Well, absolutely, it all points to points to or I mean that's the purpose that's the purpose in all things that's the purpose in everything um, we go back to I think it's uh, and I'm sure that we'll get to this um, when we get back to like uh, verses 11 and 12 uh, we'll kind of get into maybe Ecclesiastes 311 where um, yeah everything is, is for God's good and, and um, it has a purpose. Absolutely, absolutely. So, you know, with, with Eliphaz and him just kind of speaking this way yeah. towards Job and, and, and linking the two with his iniquity and sin. And it really does confuse Job a great deal because they're all saying, well, you must have done something egregious, you know, to deserve this. And yeah. it's, it's done so that the glorification of God can be seen and his will can be accomplished. Right. And not, not only does he have... Because you have these these friends, these friends that have come along, um, and they're from Edom, right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. so they're like supposed to be these guys that are from this place of like wise men, for example. Yeah. 
So not only does Job have these guys come in and telling him all this stuff, but he's also dealing with not just mental and he's dealing with physical stuff as well. You know, I, I, he's probably just itching. He's got these boils and yeah. he's dealing with physical pain as well. So he has all of this stuff that's kind of falling on his shoulders yeah. at the same time. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I love the reality of, of what's here in the text, too, of Job not really holding anything back. And he's saying, my, my complaint for you right now, Lord, is, is pretty bitter. Like, yes. it's, it's, I mean, literally, it's the word there that you can substitute is, is defiant. Like, mm -hmm. my, my argument is, like, I'm not happy right now. I'm struggling. And, and for us, you know, we, we can bring that kind of posture to the Lord and just saying, God, I'm struggling right here. Like, yes, I'm, I'm saying sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost, but I'm, I'm struggling right now with some things, and, and I need somebody to talk to about this. Um, and so he just brings the realness and the rawness of, of his feelings and emotions. He brings them. And so we'll keep going in verse 3. He says, Oh, that I knew where I might find him, that I might come even to his seat. He says, I lay my case before him and fill my mouth with arguments. I would know what he would answer me and understand what he would say to me. Mm -hmm. um, so with him, you know, laying his case before the Lord um, and just saying that he, he wishes that he could, he could find him. So in essence, he's saying like, Lord, I'm, I'm struggling to find you. I'm, I'm struggling to see you in the midst of this, in the midst of this issue. So and one question I, I just want to pitch to you is... Um, you know, has there ever been a time in your life where you found it hard to maybe find God or sense his presence or, you know, what is there a time that's, that that's been for you? Yeah, um, probably numerous. <laughs> I mean, yeah. just to be open and transparent, but um, really the, the end of a tour, um, I did a tour in Iraq. to a place of seclusion. Um, I went to a place where there was just a lot of heartache and bitterness and pain. And it, it just felt like it wouldn't like it wouldn't go away. And um, yeah, that was a very tough, tough time in my life. And um, I remember being at the point where I would say, Lord, like I can't, I can't do this, I can't deal with this, and that, that lasts a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and so, I, you know, I, I think about that and just knowing the realness of where people are and, and just the struggle of, of not only this, but even in the past of just trying to figure out how, how do I navigate um, the situations of life? And, and it could even be... Um, Cases of just uh, to where there's there's clinical help that is needed to where there's an imbalance or there's some you know deep fear or anxiety that you're feeling and you can't explain it and and you got you know all kind of things coming at you and you're trying to find solutions and and it could just be it could be like a, a dark hole yeah. you know that 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 can, can can seem to be hard to get out of um, and so you know with that in in, in that particular situation like there's there's a number of things that that we can certainly turn to but but the ultimate one that we seek uh, to find is, is is Christ and he will be found and we'll look at that here in the text a little bit later but also just the, the blessing I'm sure you have somebody speaking to encouragement to you and speaking life to you and about you and, and, and some community maybe even in your wife and you know so so it's important to have that it's important to have others around you that can encourage you and, and help lift you up. Uh, unlike Joe's friends, uh, we definitely don't want to be like that. But but to, to encourage one another on, and so yeah, it, yeah. You, you mentioned something too, and I know that I am on that we're on social media right now. So I don't know how wise this is for me, but um, so I don't know who's watching, and I just feel like somebody who's watching right now probably needs to hear this. And I have 
haven't told very many people this, but I've also I've also dealt with depression. Um, that's hard. That's a hard thing to admit as a pastor. Um, but it and, and these are times right now too where if you haven't dealt with that, this is an easy time to sink into that. People who have dealt with that, it's even easier for them. We're, we're in this place of like seclusion, I think, you know, trying to, to seclude ourselves from others, and we're not supposed to live that way. Um, we're created to, to have relationships with, yeah. with people in the Lord. So um, take, take people's advice. Um, if you're dealing with depression, talk with somebody. Um, talk with a doctor if you need to. Um, it's just very important that, that we put a, put a grasp on that. Absolutely. I, I agree 100%. And, and if you find yourself in that place right now, uh, and like you say, I mean, it's, it's definitely in the best setting to, to help with those things because you are secluded. And I mean, even... You know, we've got some glimpses of even good weather, but even just a consistent uh, rain. I mean, it just those things play play effect in, in your heart and mind. Yeah. And so I would encourage you, um, we'd love to pray for you if, if you find yourself in that place. And just shoot us a, a private message. You can message us on our on our church uh, website. You can do it on our church Facebook. But, but we'd love to be in prayer for you if you need recommendations for folks to, um, to, to counsel with you. We'd love to provide that and put you in the right direction in, in that as well. So this is all like relevant to, to what we're in, yeah. in the word right now and even in this season of life. And so, you know, we don't we don't just skirt over those things. We legitimately want to to shed some light on those things because they're very, very real. And so um, so so Job here, he's he's going, you know, I, I, that I might find him. And, and when he says that I, I would lay my case before him and fill my mouth with arguments, um, what Job is trying to do here is he's trying to he's trying to like vindicate himself yeah. because he's got his friends going, you're in sin, you've got iniquities going on. And Job's like, man, if I could just present my case to the Lord, like the Lord would know that I'm I'm not. It's not like that, you know. I'm not in some deep sin. Right. Um, and so that's that's what he's trying to say. If I could just present my case, if I could just find the Lord, then, then I could find some vindication as well. And he says, I, I know what he would answer me um, and, and understand what he would say to me. Um, and, then, and then in verse 6 it said, would he contend with me in the greatness of his power? No. He would pay attention to me. There's an upright man, uh, there's an upright man who could argue with him and I would be acquitted forever by my judge. And um, and so his 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 ploy there is to is to say, Lord, I I, I want to put this before you, but but I'm struggling to find you. I'm struggling to find you. Um, that's a bold um, a bold thing to say too. Yeah. Is to say, Lord, I I'll take everything and I'll put all of it, all of it before you. Yeah, all of it. That's a yeah, it is. It, it really is. Yeah, um, and so this is uh, this is where it, the, it begins to change for Job here in, in the next few verses. This is where um, just the reality of who God is really begins to change his perspective on what he's feeling, what he's experiencing, and what he sees. And so let's look at that together. Um, in verse eight, uh, he said, "Behold, I go forward, but he is not there." And backwards, but I do not perceive him. On the left hand, when he is working, I do not behold him. He turns to the right hand, but I do not see him. So I was thinking, like, the question that I asked you earlier about, you know, has there been a time when it's been hard for you to find God? What's, what's happening, what I see in this text is Job is, is struggling to perceive God. Because he just said, I'm, I'm trying to perceive him, trying to see him left, right, front, back, but I can't. Find him. And, and what I see in this, and this has been a struggle with me, is it's not so much where God is or where I am in relations to God, but where God is in relations to me. Like, it's, it's, 
It's not that God has disappeared, that he's gone somewhere, that he's gone on vacation. God is consistent. He is right there. But the question is, how far have I wanted to Right. Like, how far have I drifted? Because it's, it's not that God has gone somewhere. It's not that, that he's not easy to find. It's just, I'm not easy to find sometimes. Yeah, that, I remember reading, um, I don't know who said it. I think it just said it, it was from the Puritan. But he talked about, he was talking about this very thing. He said, well, Job, like, he looks left and looks right. He looks behind and in front and all this. Well, what if he just stopped and looked up? Looked up. <laughs> and um, I think of that, too. And being, I think about my past situations and places that I've been in life that where I've struggled to see God. And oftentimes, looking back, what I've learned is if I had just stopped, and I think that oftentimes I, we look for God so hard that we're, we're looking in places instead of just stopping. Yeah. And we just have to stop and yeah. be still. Absolutely. And yeah, I, I think about... Um, we look for the answer more than we look for God, I think. Absolutely. No, I... Correct. I, I think that's so relevant for right now. Yeah. We we're looking for for answers, and we're looking for a band aid to put over a gushing wound. Yeah. And and you can you can seek the answer. And okay, Lord, you know how how do I how do I handle this fear, this anxiety, what's going on? But the answer is not found in in this or that. The answer is a person, and it's Jesus. Right. Like, we, we're going after the lesser things instead of the greatest thing. And and the greatest thing that we need is we need the position to come and and, and sew us up and, and, and heal us. We don't just need a band-aid on it. And so, like with what's going on in our world today, let's not just seek to find the band-aids and the temporary fixes for a uh, – we, we, we need God to come in and to, to do a work inside of us to where he heals us completely. Um, and, 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 and when we're talking about, you know, Job looking for the Lord, um, I think about my kids and I think about how they love playing hide and go seek. Um, they love to go and hide and, and daddy come chase them down. Now, they, they think they're great at it, but while they're hiding, I can see everything. You know, like hide behind a, a yeah, pole I can see they're, they're sticking out. They're sitting there laughing, you know, as loud as can be. Um, and I'm like, I can see you. Like, and I even know where they're going to go hide before they go hide, you yeah. know? And I think about God, like, <laughs> man, it's like, it's like the question that he asked in the garden. Mm. Like, yeah, he knows where you're at. He knows where you're at. Yeah. He didn't have to ask that question. Exactly. He already knows. And, and, and God... You can you can quote me on this. God is the greatest hide go seek player ever. He will find who he's looking for. All right. He will find you, no matter where you are, no matter where you're trying to hide, uh, no matter what deep dark hole you find yourself in. Uh, God is persistent in in his pursuit of us, and and he will find you. And so, so in looking at that, like it's it's more, Job, are you centering yourself? On the answer, uh, and so and so here's here's where it begins to change for him in verse ten. So he's like, I can't find them. Verse ten says, but he knows the way that I take. There it is. He knows the way that I take. When he has tried me, I shall come out as gold. So let's let's pause there for a moment. I got a, a quote from Spurgeon. Snake bottom in there, man. Um, and Spurgeon said this. He said, good men are washed towards God, even by the rough waves of their grief. And when their sorrows are deepest, their highest desire is not to escape from them, but to get to their God. But to get to their God. And so what we see is Job is, he's got the grief are pushing him more towards God. They're pushing him more towards the Father. And, and that's what it should do for us. But, but like you said, we see a refinement process taking place. And, and I, just, I just want to sit on this for a moment when he says that uh, he knows the way that I take. When he's tried me, I shall come out as gold. 
Um, so I thought about two passages with, with this being tried as, as gold. And, and 1 Corinthians 3.12 is, is the first one that came to mind. Uh, 1 Corinthians 3.12, starting in verse 12. Uh, it says, Now if anyone builds on the foundation with gold, silver, or precious stones, wood, hay, straw, each one's work will become manifest, for the day will disclose it. The day will disclose it because it will be revealed by fire, and the fire will test what sort of work each one has done. Uh, if the work that anyone has built on uh, the foundation survives, he will receive a reward. Uh, and it goes on to talk about uh, just what you've built on, what you've built with, is going to be tested and it's going to be tried. But the day is going to disclose it. And so you, you think about the day that we're in right now, it's disclosing a lot of foundations. It's disclosing what people have built with. Have you built with wood, with hay, with straw, or have you built with gold, with silver, with precious metal that cannot be consumed um, in the fire? And so I, I thought about that, and then it took me, I thought about 1 Peter um, chapter 1. Again, looking at this refinement process and coming out as pure gold. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 6. It says, In this you rejoice, though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been grieved by various trials, so that the tested genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold, that perishes, though it is tested by fire, it may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Though you have not seen him, you have loved him. Though you do not now see him, you believe in him, and you rejoice with great joy. I, I just, that is so prevalent, man, for where we are right now. Um, just looking at, at the testing of it, and even with what Job is saying, of how he's struggling to find God, uh, it's, it's the testing of that. That's going to result in, in joy and in praise. And, and I just, I've seen this played out uh, in, in many people's lives. I think about a church member of ours who um, wasn't too long ago that, that lost a baby, mm -hmm. a full-term baby. And, and you talk about a trial. Like, I just, I cannot imagine going through that. And so many have, so many of you that are listening have gone through tragedy and, and loss and heartbreak. But I just think about their testimony and how solid they were in their faith. And that was just, that was such a trial. But, but the, the joy and the praise that they had, even in the midst of the fire, man, it just, it refined them so much. And, uh, and it encouraged our entire church to see how they handled that situation and responded in faith and not fear. And so, yeah, it's just, it's just interesting how, how Job is, is, is getting the point of it. Getting the point yeah. of the testing and the trial is... It's to be refined to come out of pure gold. So, yeah, man, it's encouraging. Yeah, there's this there's this thing about the removal of something to come out more pure. It just the the part. It goes back to what we were saying earlier, like the purpose, the purpose, the purpose. Yeah. And uh, it, it goes back to to our lives individually with um, even outside of co coronavirus. Um, why is it that we deal with? Why is it that we go through things? Why is it that we struggle with things? Um, and for us as believers, ultimately, the whole purpose of that is, is, is to make us look more like Christ. Yeah, I totally agree. And it's such a beautiful, beautiful thing. Yeah. Like, if, if you think about what's the, what's the greatest gift that you could be given on this side of heaven, what's the best thing that can happen to you? Look more like Jesus. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And and I think about that. Just there's times when it's um, it's painful too. Absolutely. It's, it's it's in that refining process. Man, it it can be it can be really tough. Yeah. Um, and and it's a, it's a chipping away of our flesh. It's a chipping away of the idea of control. Mm -hmm. um, that's one of the things that I've been learning the most during this time right here is the, the, the idea of the illusion of control 
that I thought I had. Um, we don't have any, right. none, none at all. I mean, it's, there's so many things that are out of our control that, that we can do absolutely nothing about. But God, as a part of his character, is the fact that he remained in control. Right? And so I look at me, I look at him, I look at my instability, I look at my failings and failures, and I look at his consistency um, over time. And, and, and him even stepping outside of time, being a God that is timeless. Like it's, man, that's where I'm, that's where I'm gonna put my faith, right there. Right. That's where I'm right there. Um, that doesn't mean we don't have questions. That doesn't mean we don't have concern of things, but like literally, we don't just say it and live it. He is in absolute control. Um, and 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 in the 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 worst of situations, or what seems like the worst of situations, man, God will turn that thing for good, and He'll turn that thing for His glory. And and some of the stuff we won't we won't see until we're either in the middle of it or on the backside of it. Right. Um, there might be things, and I believe there are things that will outlive us that 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 are done that God chooses to do in our lives that benefits the next generation. And so that's. That's, that's just how God has chosen to work, and we just have to, to rest in that, but also take great joy in that mm -hmm. um, because he's responsible for us. Yeah. Uh, he's responsible for our, our well-being. Um, he, he's, he's completely responsible. So. Yeah, and, and really alongside of that is just what you talked about is really this eternal mindset. Yeah. And... Having that eternal mindset, being able to have that eternal mindset, really, it just gives so much comfort to know that um, everything that happens here, on, on this side of heaven, on earth, yeah. does it does it have a purpose? Absolutely, hundred um, percent. Will it last forever? Not at all. Yeah. And and really, you know. Being cooped up in the house for what four days now, three days now. Mm -hmm. Four days can seem like a long time, especially if you got a bunch of kids running around. Especially yes, if some of them are teenagers. Oh. Um, but you know, and even if this turns into seven days or fourteen days, it's going to feel like a really long time then. Yeah. But in terms of eternity, compared to eternity, this is it's. It's just this it is safer. It is. It is. Absolutely. It's a good word, man. Um, yeah. And so then in verse 11, he says, My foot has held fast to his steps. Mm -hmm. I've kept his way and not turned aside. Um, I just, I think that's just a great reminder for us um, that our, 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 our footing is, is in his footing. Like it's, it's keeping in, in his steps, in his direction, in his instruction. And, uh, and I've kept his way and not turned aside. Um, verse 12, he says, I have not departed from the commandment of his lips. I've treasured the words of his mouth more than my portion for, of food. But he is unchangeable, and who can turn him back? Um, so, so what I see here is Job really beginning to encourage himself in the Lord. Um, he's like, no, nah, this isn't about my iniquity. It's not about my sin. Because um, I know that I, I've trusted God in this. And, and I know that I've kept in step with him, that, that, that I hadn't turned away from his commandments. And so it's, it's, Job is just encouraging, encouraging himself. And, and that's just, there's those times where you just, you've got to do that because other folks might not be accessible, you know. They might be busy doing something else, but you've got to, to be able to encourage yourself in the Lord. The Bible tells us that, that David himself did that. Yeah. Um, and so it's an important part of praise to, to basically create a place of worship wherever you are, uh, in your car, in your, in your home, in your living room, your basement, wherever you are. Um, begin to encourage yourself in the Lord. So, so Job here, too, like you, you say he, he knows what he's doing, like, or what he, what he hasn't done. I haven't departed from the commandments of his lips. I have treasured the words of his mouth more than uh, my 
my portion of food. It is absolutely true that it's so important for us to, to preach the gospel to ourselves, to preach the word to ourselves, to remind us of these things. Um, but also, for somebody who might be listening right now, who maybe you know you haven't been doing these things, um, there's not a time in your life where the Lord says, you know what, it's unacceptable to do a 180 right now. Um, there's not a time in your life where the Lord says, I've always been here, but I'm not going to allow you to turn around and run to me. Um, so I, I just I encourage you to, to do that very thing. Um, maybe, you, you know, you, you find, you're finding yourself eating a slop with, with pigs, yeah. like the prodigal. Um, he's in the, the worst of the worst places. Mm -hmm. And he comes to this point where he realizes, you know what, I can go back home. And we see his father run to him in that time. And many of us would get to that place, I think, and instead of um, running back, we think to ourselves, I'm stuck here. There's no way the Lord could take me back. There's no way He would forgive me. I say that because I've been in that place, yeah. and um, it's just it's just not true. Yeah. So whether you're whether you're in this place like Job and you know like I'm I'm doing I'm following I'm doing what the Lord has mm -hmm. has for me to do, or whether you find yourself on the other side of the fence right now, where you're just in a mess in the world. Yeah. And, um, the, and, and I've heard you say this, we've talked about this before, like our feelings right there, like we, we get this feeling as if well, there's no way I could run back, but feeling doesn't dictate truth. You know, yeah, that's so, that's so there's never a time when you can't run back. Yeah, yeah that's good. Dr. Uh, Tony Evans, he, he says that the, uh, the truth is, is the engine and, and your feelings and emotions are the caboose. And mm -hmm. you never want to allow the caboose to to drive the train in place of the engine. And so, yeah, it's, it's absolutely true, man. And just, and it's important to, to, to delineate um, just when it's, it's, it's gospel suffering and, and you're being tried and when it's a mess that you've made, right? It's, it's absolutely important to, to delineate the two because some of us, it, it, we just need to repent, right? You know, we need to turn from whatever sin we're in, and, and we need to come to Christ. But, but also, don't don't allow yourself to be uh, just condemned and let that push you into a place of running from God. Right. Um, because our, our response should always be to to run to Him. Um, that is a response of a, of a mature believer is to say, "Yes, I made a mess of this thing, but." But I'm going to run to the answer, not from it. Right. And and so that's yes, that's absolutely where we, we find ourselves. Um, and so here in, in 13b, man, I just I love this part. It just simply says, "What he desires, that he does." Period. Like <laughs> literally, period. I mean, that's that's God. Like what he desires, that he does. And we just. We really, in, in this time and in all times, like we just really need to get a correct theological lens of who God is. Mm -hmm. And and there's an aspect of that that we can't fully conceptualize because he's God for a reason. Um, he's, he's supreme for a reason, which means we can't fit everything about him into our heads and our hearts. Like they will explode. But we do need to match up what we see in our world, what we feel, how we conduct our lives with an accurate theological view of who God is. Mm -hmm. And to me, there's, there's no greater statement than here in 13b that says what he desires that he does. And, and then even in 14, for he will complete what he appoints for me. And many such things are in his mind. So, you know, I just, again, I think about the scripture that tells us when he who began this good work in us is going to finish it to the day of completion. And the thing is, we don't know when that day is for us. We don't know when we breathe our last breath. Right. We have no idea. And I was talking to somebody about this the other day. 
you know, with the virus and just concerned for their, their life, that this could take their life. I mean, if God is truly in control and sovereign, he's already got that figured out. You know, if, if it's this that caused me to breathe my, my last, last breath or if it's when I'm 95 years old, you know, I, I don't know. But, but while I'm here, while I'm still breathing, while it is still day, like there's work to be done. So I'm, I'm killing my, my time worrying about something that I'm, I think is going to kill me, you know, literally. And so, like, let's, let's refocus our hearts that there is still work to be done. We can still, literally, we're talking to you through a screen because we know there's still work to be done. And we're still, still trying to figure out a way to do it. And this is our way of doing it right here, right now. Um, and so, yeah, it's just refocusing ourselves on who God is, um, knowing that he, in verse 14, he will complete what he appoints for me. And there are many, many such things in his mind. And, yeah. What he desires that he does, we talked about control earlier, and it's something that I struggle with a little bit. <laughs> just like wanting, needing to be, to feel like I'm in control. Mm -hmm. um, but what he desires that he does, how much does that, how, just in spite of what we're going through right now, I don't know if there's words to explain how comforting that in and of itself is. Like, there's this, I don't, know if, I, I don't even know if that makes sense, the yeah. process. No, I, absolutely, man. I just, again. There's a huge comfort. In yeah, it. it just goes back to, like, he's, he's got it all figured out. I mean, and his desires for us are not, not to harm us by right. any means. It's, it's certainly to give us a hope in the future, and. You know, it's just it's just resting in that, uh, and, and not seeing him as this cosmic booger man that's trying to zap us. You know, every time something is done wrong on our behalf, if that's the case, then we'd have been gone a long time ago. You know, I would have. <laughs> yeah. But he's he's long suffering. He's gracious, and um, and so yeah, it's just it's just tremendous comfort to to hold on to, and. Um, Yes, and he's he's God of the universe. Like one thing that I've, I've struggled with, and I thank God for for, for missions and, and, and international missions because it's gotten me outside of this Westernized, Americanized, Christianized mindset. Yeah. Um, that God is American with the bald eagle tattooed over here and American flag tattooed over here. You know that God is a Republican or a Democrat or whatever you want to say. Like no, He's so far above all those things. And again, he can work through politics, he can work through America, he can do all those things, but he's, he's God of third world countries, he's God of those who are living in huts right now, like he's, he's God of the world. And so often we try to put him in a box. Man, we, we like love we to. We want to confine him to, <laughs> to a demographic, yeah. we want to actually confine God to a, to a place. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think it's, it's human nature because that's something we think we can control. Right. And um, and we can't. We can't. We can't. Um, I think the YouTube went out, you guys, so I think we're just uh -oh. going to Facebook right now. Um, so, sweet. Well, let's wrap this up because uh, I'm sure some folks got to get to dinner or either they're eating dinner right now. Um, so, in verse 15, he says, Therefore, I am terrified at his presence when I consider I am in dread of him. God has made my heart faint. The Almighty has terrified me. And so you look at that and you think, man, Job, okay, so you had the, the moment of concern of just where you say you're, 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 you're groaning, your argument is bitter, then it seems like you go to the shift of understanding the purpose, then it seems like he takes a step back. But he, when you look at it, it's not that he's taking a step back. Because when you look at verse 17, he says, Yet I am not silenced because of the darkness, nor because of thick darkness, uh, because thick darkness covers my face. What is he not silenced about? He's not silenced about everything that he just said in the middle of this text, of knowing who God is, of knowing who he is in God. 
Um, and so, you know, there, there's a, a fear that we should absolutely have when it comes to God uh, uh, within his holiness and understanding just how this whole thing operates. And God's God of justice and, mm-hmm. and his wrath was absolutely just when he poured it out on Christ on the cross. And, um, but he's also God of, of deep grace and mercy and just patience that we see. And, and I think Job is, he's getting it. And he's going to go still, there's, there's more chapters to be had in this, in this book. And he's going to struggle still with his flesh and his humanity as we all do. Even though we know the truth, those of you that are in Christ. Um, but he gets to a place where he says, yet I'm not going to be silenced because of the darkness. Uh, nor the thick darkness that covers my face. So it's, it's not a removing necessarily of the circumstance for him. It's not just because he came to that place of realizing who God was that it's automatically gone. But what changed was his perspective. That's good. Yeah, what, what changed was the way in which he, he looked at what he saw. And, and for us, that's what's got to begin to happen is our perspective on this thing. We are children of God. Like, we, we are his sons and his daughters. Our perspective should be different than the world's. There should be a difference when you look at, at this text and just, you know, where, where we're at with it and, and, you know, just the encouragement that comes from it, man. I just, I, it, it just all points us to Christ. It just points us to him and to his glory and to his beauty and uh, just lifting our eyes to Jesus. So, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, for sure. He's... Um He's just, I, I try to contemplate, I try to think about the word sovereign. Mm. You know, it's one thing to say God is sovereign, because he is. Yeah. But to try to imagine or, or really grasp the meaning of that. And just, you know, there's, not, there's not a sparrow or a dove that, mm. Drops dead out of the tree without God's authority on it. Absolutely. Um, the sole reason that, that I get to take that breath yeah. is because God's given it to me. There's no different than what this virus is going around, or the situation is going God is in control of the Yeah. Very confident. Very confident. So. Yeah, so that's that's the text. I don't know if we got any questions out there, um, but if you have some, shoot them in pretty quickly because we're gonna let you guys go. Um, also, if if you're on still right now, we'd love to know what time works best for you. So we do this at six tonight. Um, six thirty is another option. Don't really want to go any later than that. So if six works. Just put six. If six thirty is better, just put that in the comment. I know there's a family dinner time and. Uh, just other things that are happening at the house. So we don't want to interrupt any of that stuff. We want to do what's convenient for you guys. So just let us know if 6 is better or, uh, or 630. Also, keep shooting us the prayer requests that you have. Um, next week, we're going to do this again. <clears throat> we're going to have another pastor along with us. Uh, pastor Mark Babin is going to be here. And we're going to dig into another topic, another text, and, and just come right to you. Um, just from, again, from our heart to, uh, to your home. So pray that you encourage in the word. Um, I guess we'll, we'll pray. Uh, you know, my friend, I don't care, not at all. Awesome. Uh, Father, Lord, while we couldn't gather together physically um, this evening, Lord, we, we have this technology. It's just it's, you've given us the ability to, to use it, Lord. And, and Father, we're grateful for that. Lord, while this is a time of uncertainty for us, it's it's not an uncertainty time for you, Father. You are sovereign. You are in control. So, Father, you and us, Father, help it to, to make us look more like your son, Jesus. Father, when we have questions, when we have doubts, Lord, um, we know, Father, that we can bring those things and, and lay them at your feet, Father. Mm-hmm. Lord, we're grateful for your word. Lord, we're grateful, Father, that we already know the outcome. Yes. 
You've already sent your son. He's already conquered death. He's already beat it. And, and Lord, we are, we're grateful. We're grateful for your grace and your mercy for the faith that you've given us, Father. And we're grateful for the hope that we have in your son, Jesus. So, Father, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And this is in the name of your son, Jesus. We pray. Amen. Amen. Thanks for uh, joining and uh, be with us at 10 a.m. for our live stream for our service. Then we'll catch you then. God bless you.